Have you ever felt that you needed a bit more power when you were using a REPL? Well, Replit's Power Ups are for you. A way of adding private REPLs, always on, and boosts to your REPLs to increase their capability. In this mini series, we'll be looking at all three of the power ups available to you in a REPL today and how you can use them to make your life easier, faster, and that little bit better. So join me as we look at the power ups of Replit. So, by default, a REPL is provisioned with a certain amount of resources. You get free storage up to 500 megabytes, and that's per REPL, 500 megabytes of RAM. 0.2 to 0.5 of a CPU and live multiplayer collaboration by default. Now this is enough for most people's usage on a REPL. If you are more of a power user or you require a bit more from it from time to time, boosts are for you. Let's start with a simple web server. Now we all know that web servers use a lot of RAM, especially if you've got multiple requests coming in from lots of different users. Now that can mean that very quickly like my web server, with lots of traffic, the RAM can be filled. And if you take a look there at the moment, that RAM is hitting about 600 megabytes, which is over my limit, but the REPL's being really nice to me and let me get on with it. So let's see if we can boost that. From the name slug at the top of the page, you can click that and then click the toggle to boost. We'll be asked if we want to spend our 20 cycles a day. It's well worth it on any REPL and we can turn that on. Then suddenly look at my usage drop. The graphs have all gone down into a more manageable state and my RAM is not being hammered. I now have accessible four gigabytes of RAM, so my web server is much more compliant and much better at handling the task of serving content to all my users. But you can select a more powerful boost all the way up to 32X for 350 cycles a day. If I want to push it up further, I can go back into my boosts, click edit and move it all the way up to 32X if I'd like to. And at 32 times boost, my REPL is handling its server load really, really well. Why don't you try taking some web server code and turning on a boost and seeing how much of a difference it makes under heavy load. Of course, another time where we need more resources is when we're installing packages. Replit has a fantastic package manager, which allows you to install almost anything from the wider internet. Much better than using things like PIP, in my opinion, anyway. But when we're setting up our REPLs for the first time, when we're installing those packages, it can be frustrating to wait. Here, I've decided to try and install the TensorFlow library in a Python REPL. This is a huge library that allows you to code machine learning algorithms, but I've pitted them against each other. On the bottom is a REPL with its basic settings, and on the top is a REPL that's boosted. I've also got the graphs up on both of them so you can see the utilization. You'll see on the basic one, CPU is spiking massively as we go, hitting its maximum. The RAM is far over its basic limits. With our boosted REPL, it's staying well within safety and using a minimal amount of the CPU. It's also shocking how quickly it gets done. There, the boosted REPL is complete. The package is installed. And the original REPL is still going. And going. And going. So, if you are working on intensive installs and packages, it's well worth putting a boost on just for the time that you're going to be working on it. Two cycles is a small price to pay for a much easier package management life. Why don't you try installing TensorFlow with and without boosts turned on and see what difference it makes to different REPLs. Or take some of the packages that you utilize on a more regular basis and see the difference that two cycles a day can make to setting up the environment. Another great example of where boosts comes in really handy is any real-time graphics. With half a CPU at your disposal, something like this recent trending REPL, which uses Pygame to do ray tracing, is not getting much above eight frames a second. But if we turn boost on, almost immediately and visibly, you'll see the frame rate of that animation not only shoot up, but the quality of it increase dramatically. We're getting double almost straight away, and it's looking very nice and consistent. If I turn that off, it falls back down to where it was before with the CPU spiking. Try getting that code in and seeing the difference that turning on and off a boost does for your rendering of graphics. It's also really, really useful for high intensity languages. Things like Java that use virtual machines use a massive amount of resources. 
and as a basic REPL can feel a little sluggish and annoying to use. If you do a lot for Java development, I would highly suggest you turn a boost on, because look at the difference that this simple Hello World program takes to compile and run on a normal REPL versus a boosted REPL. It's night and day, and if you do a lot of Java development in Replit, having a boost on your REPL is well worth it. Your challenge today is very, very simple. I want you to find a combination of packages and code that will really push the basic REPL. Install packages, run code, run web servers until you're maxing out the CPU and the RAM. Do what you'd like, install what you'd like, see what happens. I'd recommend big libraries, graphic libraries, and even grabbing some graphics code off the internet if you can. Once running, compare the performance of the REPL with and without boosts. You'll be pleasantly surprised. Next time, we'll be looking at Always On because who wants their Discord bot to fall asleep halfway through a conversation?